Yo, we'll snap that quick one for today. Um, first of all, LIGO just discovered another gravitational wave, so that's really epic, only four months after the, the first discovery. Um, let's talk about video editing. I figured I've probably done too many like far out there future ideas, so we should bring it back a little bit <laughs> every now and then. Otherwise, people will get a little bit like dismayed with my crazy future ideas. Also, check out this camera work. Look at the colors, the contrasting colors. So good. I, I, I deserve an award for this, I think. Okay, so when making videos, the biggest time sink is not so much filming the videos, it's editing them. And editing is really everything about a video. Um, it's, it's what presents the story. And think of how big videos are coming online, like Facebook's predicting that most content in your feed will be videos, and I've actually already noticed that. And obviously YouTube's like massively increasing every day, but the software for it sucks. So the plan for future was actually to like, they, these Snapchat stories would be like less than a minute long, just trying to get people's feedback. Um, and then I'd collect all this information throughout the day and then edit it into a three to five minute YouTube video at the end. But the reason I put off doing that is because already, the, by the time I get my routine of like coming down to the beach, getting a coffee, doing these, it's usually like two hours like gone. Um, so editing will add another four hours on that. One of my favorite daily vloggers is uh, Casey Neistat, who does uh, probably like 10, 15 minute videos of his day uh, running around New York and doing his stuff. He says it takes him on average six hours a day to edit those videos. So this is just silly, yeah? Like, the, uh, the, the editing software needs to be way more intelligent. It needs to be like almost like machine learning driven. It needs to be automatic almost. You just tell it what you want, it does it. And I think part of the issue is that the video editing software tends to overcomplicate to, to kind of like appeal to every single possible use case you could think of, every single technique, every single special. So when you talk about the main ones, you got like say Windows Movie Maker or like um, Apple's like, you know, iMovie. They're kind of the low level stuff, but they produce really shitty videos. You got one level from there and you got like um, Final Cut Pro, which is what Casey Neistat uses, although he says it's like terrible software, it's just that's all he knows. Um, and then you've got, uh, beyond that, you got like Adobe Premiere. But like I said, all this software kind of like a one size fits all. It's, it, the software is so powerful that you can do anything with it. But I think we need software that's specific to each type of use case for video you'd create. Okay, so let's list off a few. So say Snapchat. Uh, the ideal Snapchat thing would be that I just talk to it non-stop for as long as I want. It then automatically edits it into a story. It would fix the audio, it would fix the lighting, um, and it would also like encourage me to just draw random things on the screen, or it would draw stuff on there itself to make the video look more interesting. Actually, Snapchat recently bought, uh, maybe about a year ago, a company working on video glasses. So I, I can't wait till they come out. You know, you just wear the glasses, you tap it, and it just starts recording and uploads to Snapchat. Okay, next example is like, say you're making a video for Facebook. So the common thing on Facebook now is to basically have subtitle overlays because most videos, 85% of videos are played without sound on. But again, with current video editing software, that's a shit process, that sucks. You know, every frame you've got to, you know, add, add text to it, uh, select it, you know, fade it in, animate it. So for that, here's how easy it should be. And Facebook should really just build this software themselves. You should just be able to dump in any video content, any photo content you have, just dump it into a box and then it automatically edits it. I guess you'd select like how long you want the total video length to be and then it would look at all the content you've uploaded and kind of like try and find the best bits to edit into that video, whether it's 10 or 20 seconds. Because that's all those like text videos are, they're like, you know, piece of content, either a video or a photo, zooming or moving and then just a text overlay. It's like section, 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 section. Then you can just like click into each slide, each section I guess, <laughs> um, and just like type in the text you want and then select a style of overlay and a style of animation, done. Okay, so next one, say you want to start a YouTube vlog, like a Casey Neistat daily vlog. Um, wouldn't it be epic if it just kind of like collected your, all, your, all your shots automatically and added them? So I have a feeling Casey already edits on the fly, like during the day, whenever he finds a spare, you know, a, a spare time slot, he'll sit down and start editing the clips that he already has, but then film more footage throughout the day. So there's also a bit of a hardware issue here because vloggers are always swapping in and out SD cards and they're using multiple cameras. So they might use their, their phone, they might use a point and shoot, or they might use a DSLR. So firstly, imagine they could shoot on any device they wanted and it just automatically uploaded to the cloud like any time it was in Wi-Fi or ideally just 4G or 5G. It just collects all the data automatically. Then what would happen is magical software would basically um, take all that footage, look for the best moments and just start adding it to a timeline um, and kind of just asking you questions whether, you know, whether it's a good bit to keep. Think like a more advanced version of Google Photos, how it takes all your photos and tries to stitch it together into a montage. So from Casey's perspective, he'd just basically film all day on whatever device he wants, and as soon as he jumps into this, this magical software, all of his time, all of his clips are already on the timeline, and it's selected the bits that it thinks is best. Then he just goes in and tweaks it, so he goes in and finds, you know, says yes or no whether he wants to keep that clip, and uh, does a little bit of extra little uh, short edit video. Okay, so let's talk about my, the use case for Futura. So what I want to do with Futura is basically do a, a short little Snapchat thing, get people's Snapchat replies, their tweets, their videos, their comments, their everything. 
So in other words, like any feedback in any medium across any um, network or whatever, basically gets automatically collected, dumped into the file for that day and added to the timeline. I can then jump in and just watch what everyone's feedback and thoughts are, and then I can film my own. Uh, based on based on that feedback, I can film my own additional thoughts that have evolved since since the morning. That footage also gets thrown onto the timeline. I set it to like a whatever I want, say a five minute time, uh, five minute video length, and depending on what content I'm talking about, it's automatically stitched in. And so for me, what that would hopefully do is cut down the editing time from four hours, which is why I haven't started doing those things yet, to maybe like half an hour. Um, and yeah, you need a little bit of AI, but not nothing too hectic. I don't think. So Snapchat's thoughts at Future, if you could actually redesign video editing software for today's use cases for you know the subtitles on videos, for Snapchat stories, for YouTube vlogging, what would you do and how would you make it?